everyone, welcome to Visiting Inside by Karen. Today I have a yummy yummy theme as you can see on the screen, the garlic chicken and beer, which is a fried chicken restaurant based in Melbourne. Um, it's really exciting me today, not only, because, not only because me personally is a fan of garlic chicken, but also we have invited the three special guests over here to discuss the competitive advantages of garlic chicken. Let's welcome Dr. Guru from Monash University and our old friends. Doris and Jennifer from Carfood uh, Business Consultant. So we are going to introduce the whole business uh, by analyzing the internal and external environment and its strategy and structure. So can we get started? Yeah. yeah. Okay, just a quick review of Gummy Chicken's history and how it's going right now. Um, the very first Gummy restaurant was opened in Carnegie 12 years ago and the whole business has expanded to 12 restaurants right now in Melbourne. Uh, it's a Korean style casual dinner restaurant, um, and many magazines and website has ranked Gummy Chicken as the one of the top 10 fried chicken restaurants in Melbourne. So we can tell that it's very successful. But uh, what I am thinking is, Dr. Gu, can you tell us what is the key internal factor that make Gummy Chicken so successful? What are the key internal advantages of gummy chicken. Sure, a firm's internal environment includes many components to give you a whole page and start from its resources, which contains both tangible and intangible ones. Gummy's first tangible resource is its location. They sit on prime locations such as food-centric streets or shopping malls to meet new customers with different preferences. You can easily find the bus stops or train stations near gummy store, and that brings large customer flow. The second result is that it has strong financial position. Jim Lee started the business from 100,000 and made it 16 million today. So I think it has great ability to generate funds for future expansion. Besides, the high quality of ingredients is another key to create Gammy's delicious food. All the ingredients used, such as chickens and vegetables, are from local suppliers in Victoria. Uh, with the local supply chain, Gammy is able to get fresher and better environmentally grown chicken. Hence, Gammy not only is easy to access these ingredients, but also ensure the high quality. In terms of intangible resources that cannot be observed, the most outstanding one is the tech knowledge, or more directly, the taste. As a Korean uh, restaurant, Gammy created the Australian-centric taste that fits the Australian's preference. The unique flavor of frying powder, the special seasoning, and the crispy skin offer them a distinctive food experience. Reputation is another key intangible resource. Gammy keeps close relationship with its suppliers, which is an effective way to uh, achieve winning outcome and enhance credibility when negotiating with new suppliers. Um, except the suppliers, it also has good reputation among customers. Just as Karen said yes. in the media, few Gami has top places to get fried chicken. Uh, and the customers uh, also make, make good comments on food apps, and that shows good signs. At last, I'd like to talk about its culture. Gami brings the Korean culture of sharing to Australia. And the employees learn about the culture during their training and reflect the culture in services. The internal reward system is very, also very attractive, uh, that offers the opportunities for uh, well-performing workers, such as the Gami Family Program, like being a Gami store owner with the help of Gami Farm, oh, really? very tempting to the employees. Apart from resources, I also did a value chain analysis. Here is a value chain model that identifies what activities inside GAMI create value. The results are very similar to my result analysis, so we put it briefly. Um, you can see the pro procurement, operations, and services from primary activities, and also the support activities of human resource management which cultivate employee loyalty and increase staff motivation. 
Actually, all the resources and activities inside Yami perform well. Uh, if considering the four criteria, if we have to identify the key factors or the core competencies that are um, distinctive, unique, uh, create values, distinguish Yami from its competitors, I would say the incredible test and the Gami culture. Thank you for the all the fantastic internal analysis. It seems like Gami is doing really well internally, but I am curious that is that the external environment also attractive for this business? How do you guys think? Good question, Karen. The in external environment indeed is much more complicated than the internal one. However, we still found some good things. Generally speaking, the broad environment in Australia has provided great opportunities for Gami. I elaborate from three segments. The first one is demographic. Let's see some graphs. The newest census indicates that the population size of Australia is about 24 million, and this figure keeps growing every year. All states showed positive growth, and Victoria recorded the highest. Yeah. And the age data showed that Australia has a medium age about 36, uh, 38 years old, and uh, people aged 20 to 34 accounts for a great percentage. This implies that Gami has a great customer base. The secondly, the thriving economy in Australia also gives chances to Gami. This chart compares Australia's GDP growth with uh, the major advanced economies. Clearly, Australia um, has the greatest uh, growth rate and uh, has experienced 30 years of uninterrupted growth. And it is the only country that did not enter into a um, recession during the financial crisis. Um, for the next years, the Australian Treasury foresees a continued gr growth as it expects the household consumption to rebound following a strengthening in the la country's labor market. The third thing I want to talk about is Australia's social culture. Um, decades of immigration from other countries have created a unique and uh, a diverse society in Australia. Rich in languages and religions, Australia has an interesting and vibrant culture. Being family-oriented and highly social, Aussies love hanging out with friends and families, sharing food and joy. We know Gami is devoted to bring diversity and joy by creating delightful food and spaces. So we think Gami perfectly fits Australian social culture. That's the general environment Gami is faced with. Jennifer, I'm just wondering, has Gami met any challenges so far? Uh, yeah, we think the major challenge from the uh, fried chicken industry. I uh, just want to mention here the fried chicken industry we are talking today is different from the fast food industry because we really want to narrow it down and have a deeper industry insight. Uh, I think it will be more clearer if I apply the five force model here to analyze. First of all, the bargaining power uh, of supplier is uh, relatively low as we think the government has already created a successfully create a local supply chain. And Gami is not highly relied on its real material, but the frying processing and the special seasoning, which creates the special Korean Australian flavor, which Dr. Gu has mentioned yeah. before. Yeah. Um, however, the threat of new entrants is high, as we think the there is low entry barriers within the fried chicken industry with low capital requirements and fewer political restrictions. And we also noticed that there is a popular trend uh, among the younger generations currently. Uh, th this is another reason why more engines are coming to this industry. Uh, similarly, we think the uh, threat of substitute product is also high because there are lots of Korean or Asian style of restaurants in Melbourne and people have lots of choices like the Korean barbecue or the Chinese hot pot. Um, and there's also a large number of fast food choices like the KFC or the Hungry Jacks, which has already occupied a large portion of market share due to their convenient and cheaper choices. Uh, besides, we think the bargaining power of buyers is high because 
you know, the consumer has easy access to lots of uh, bull choices today. Um, in spite of that, uh, we don't think the competitors put an uh, extremely high threat on Garmin because uh, it, even though the number of competitors is extremely big, uh, most of them are just private owned, which means only have one, two, three stores in Australia, while Garmin has already expanded to 14 stores. Um, and there are fewer large brands in Melbourne. That's another reason why we put this criteria at medium. So what do you mean is the competitive rival is medium, but it's also increased on yeah. Okay, so yeah, thanks, Jen. Uh, we can tell that there's a lot of challenges with different types of challenges uh, in this particular fried chicken industry. Um, could you please tell us more about who the competitive, uh, who the direct competitors are of Garmin Chicken? Of course. Uh, to give you a better understanding of Garmin's main competitors, here's the strategic, strategic groups diagram. Uh, we allocate the amount of stores, which represents the business scale and also the fried chicken flavor range as X and Y axis respectively. And we can notice that most of these competitors are located at the very large circle at the bottom, uh, such as the Four Fingers, Crispy, the Moog, Jiva, and the Leonard. Um, and um, all of them just have one store, uh, which is really a, a small business scale. Yeah. Uh, and um, at the central area, we can notice that these restaurants have a million amount of store as well as their fried chicken range. Uh, and as what I touched before at the Bible's model, Garmin is really special due to its large business scale, uh, 14 stores. Uh, and as I think, at least in Melbourne, no one is doing the same thing. And also we can find, uh, we can also find a strong competitor in the market, uh, which is Nando Chicken, uh, due to its uh, large scale of fried chicken flavor range. Yes, exactly. I do agree that uh, the fried chicken market is right now very active and there are many strong competitors in the particular fried chicken industry. And we, we know that um, the Garmin chicken is faced with different types of challenges and opportunities both inside and outside the business. But what I'm thinking is how is Garmin chicken dealing with so complicated situation? and I think it might be a good time to talk about how Garmin is using its business level strategy. So Garmin Chicken is somehow taking the best cost strategy right now, uh, which works both on the cost cutting and differentiation from competitors. To achieve a lower cost, Garmin Chicken's supply chain strategy uh, successfully helped the whole business to achieve economic of scale and take advantage of experience and learning curves. As Dr. Gu touched before, the local supply networks and the training employees further make sure that the high uh, efficiency in the value chain activity. Uh, in terms of the differentiation from competitors, Gamji can also put a lot of effort in it uh, because it's trying to create uh, unique flavors and healthy options to the customers. Again, the Korean sharing culture makes Garmin more special in the market. But my question is, is that a substantial plan for Garmin Chicken? As we all noted that Garmin Chicken is expanding recently to Sydney to more places, while the best cost strategy may have a problem that it can stop in the middle. So, Jen, do you have any suggestion about Garmin's future strategy adjustment? Uh, yeah, Karen, I agree with what you have just said, that the best cost strategy may not perform perfectly in the future. And as I said, what Garmin faced with today is a considerable threat of rival and also some pressure from the great number of new engines. And all of these businesses are doing the same thing, that is producing the fried, fried chicken. chicken. Yeah. yeah. And I would argue that differentiation, differentiation uh, would be very hard within the fried chicken industry, uh, even though Garmin has is doing a great job now. And 
For my suggestion, if you ask, would be emphasizing more on the cost cutting, uh, if possible, transferring to a pure strategy. Oh, that's interesting. The head code of Garmin, if you're watching this, be aware you may reconsider the strategy or contact these consultants here. here. <laughs> Okay, just kidding, come back to our discussion. Uh, we know that the structure is also significant to one's success. So, do you guys think Garmin has a supportive structure? Yeah, Garmin has utilized a, a decentralized divisional structure. This format is simple and straightforward. It has one head office in Melbourne and 14 franchise stores in different places, with 12 in Victoria and 2 in Western Australia. And in the next year, Gami is looking to expand into Sydney. Um, as we can see from this chart, Gami owns all of the 14 franchises, but it also gives significant autonomy, which means that each store manager can act independently. This is good because it motivates um, senior managers to work hard since they are accountable for the results of local operation. Each store man manager is able to analyze on his specific situation and come up with appropriate strategy based on its own regional market and customers. In addition, uh, these franchises may compare with each other in uh, operating performance, and this kind of internal competition would uh, promote Gami's businesses as well. So we think that this structure has given full play to the internal and uh, external advantages of Gami. Mm, it may not enough to draw a final conclusion that Gami has a, a supportive structure. So more evidence is found in the feedback from customer and employees. Um, we think this good feedback from employees and customers are the most powerful evidence to su support that Gami is success successful in implementing its existing business strategy and uh, structure sure. in the Australian market. Yes, exactly. And there is the good news that our journalist Rachel also managed to uh, interview one of the store managers of Garmin Chicken. And let's have a look. Uh, hi, I'm reporter Rachel, and today we are going to find some secrets of one popular restaurant, Garmin. And I'm so excited. Let's go. Come on. Gummy, and we ordered two popular things. You can see. And let me try one first. Mm, really good. And uh, just now we interviewed the store manager, who has been working here for almost three years. But she is so shy, and she don't want to uh, show up in this video. So I will explain what happened. And then we talked about the training system. She told me that it can be divided into manager training and manual knowledge training. Uh, it's been for different levels of employees, like managers or the current employees. The whole training system highlights the customer service, which can attract customers to come back. And she told me the rewards in here, she is very satisfied. Just like the employee of the month who performs well, um, who can and then they can get to all three movie tickets. Uh, and Gami have an office in North Melbourne, so it can directly manage all the issues in its office, just like uh, financial stuff and etc. Um, Gami recently has cooperated to different companies like delivery company to keep the pace with its rapid expanding. And um, the new store will open maybe next month in Sydney. And lots of customers I heard have really forward to this event. And finally, the manager told me that she really want to work in Gami for the future careers and uh, to get maybe more skills and uh, knowledge. Uh, with. And she thinks um, Gami has really friendly working environment. And that's all. I will keep enjoying this food in Ghana. Bye, see you next time. How cute is she? Um, yeah. Thanks for the information she brought to us. And we all noted that Ghana Chicken's employees were very 
satisfied with the structure and the strategy of the whole business, right? So yeah, um, after an overall analysis of the internal external environment and the strategy and the structure of Gummy Chicken, uh, we could say that Gummy Chicken uh, success comes from a great interface of internal strength and external opportunities. And this perfect interface cannot be achieved without the fast call strategy and a multi-divisional structure so that a gum chick successfully um, create its competitive advantages, especially in the lower cost, the special taste, and the culture and brand reputation. We all noted that the gummy is recently expanding rapidly in more places. Uh, we have some suggestions for the business. As Jennifer mentioned before, um, the gummy chicken may need more focus on the cost cutting part. Um, yeah, we are looking for Gummy's next step to bring a amazing food and culture to more places. Again, thank all of you. It's really enjoyed to talk to you guys. Thank you for being here. And this will conclude today's Business Insight. I am Karen. I will see you next Friday. Bye.